exclusive, you know exactly what you're getting. Or do you? There's ants everywhere. Oh, it stinks. I've never seen anything like it. And this is the cure for the food. My whole body shut down. None of us knew what was happening. When all-inclusive holidays go horribly wrong. Sunday at 8 on Channel 5. Now on Channel 5, time for your daily dose of backstage goss as we get the entertainment scoop with Access. This is Access, your global entertainment news. Coming up, David Schwimmer hopes his new sitcom can live up to other British classics. Physical humour combined with character-driven comedy um, of shows like The Original Office. I mean, I, I, I like it all, um, and I think this show hopefully will translate to both both countries equally well. Johnny Flynn explains the one thing he doesn't have in common with Bill Nye. I shouldn't say this. He, he, for some reason, he doesn't get but Dolly Parton, but I think he's just... A Dolly fan who hasn't realised yeah. yet he's got to be. And you can feel all cool and arty once you've seen the latest Wes Anderson trailer. The aromas of the kitchen cast a spell, which was to be mortally broken. As you know by now, we have kidnapped your son. First though, Noah Centineo is back to reclaim his crown as the internet's number one boyfriend as the All the Boys sequel hits Netflix. Bigger the menu, the fancier the restaurant. Everybody knows that. Fans of his hair should look away now, although he has added a cool vocal fry to his speech style. I poured everything I could into this character and this film and this this whole project, you know, and, and all three films and, and we made a family out of it and I think we were successful on a personal level and, and creating a lot of connection. Lana Condor is the star of the movies and she's gonna miss them. Kind of closing that chapter was like very hard for me, you know, um, but. Please don't cry. I'm so happy because we do have these movies so I can always go back and watch it for sure. <laughs> but yeah, it was difficult. Next, New York hosted the premiere of Julia Louis-Dreyfus's new film, Downhill. It's the Hollywood remake of the Swedish cult classic Force Majeure, about a family surviving an avalanche on a skiing trip. I think this movie is actually about truth and telling the truth and owning the truth. The truth in this case is whether the father, played by Will Ferrell, tries to save himself and not his family. It's a much different story if after Pete's faithful decision, he just comes back and addresses it right away. You can see how he tackles that conundrum at the end of the month. Next, the costumes in period dramas are always fun to look at, but spare a thought for the actors. It's like an acre of embroidered silk with a Napoleonic collar, and you're, it's supposed to be the thing you relax in, around the house in. You must have had a shocking walk. Not at all, sir. It's a beautiful evening. You must have found it very damp and dirty. Dirty, sir. <laughs> Look at my shoes. Bill Nye's been woven into the ensemble for a retelling of Jane Austen's Emma, and you have one person to thank. The reason I'm in the film is because Autumn DeWilde is the director, and I met her, and she had a whole new way of talking about this kind of film, and I thought she had a fresh angle. Bill's been a legend for audiences ever since Love Actually, a fact his fellow cast members are fully aware of. You can't meet Bill Nye and then meet us, because it's just not going to... Uh, you can. <laughs> I mean, physically I mean, you can. I mean, I am. <laughs> yeah. Johnny Flynn plays George Knightley, but Anya Taylor-Joy is Emma herself, an iconic character with a big bonnet to fill. She really thinks she's the best thing that's ever happened to the planet Earth, and I think I, I had to... I had to work on that, and especially inhabiting some of those costumes, you know, the bonnet was going to wear me unless I gave myself a pretty severe pep talk and, and walked into the room with, with some confidence. You had to channel your inner sass. Yeah. We wondered if Anya might have channeled any of her previous characters, like Lily from Thoroughbreds or Casey from Split, into Emma. They've all been so different. I think my mum the other day was like, it'd be really interesting to get all of them together and have a dinner party and just, like, see what happens. I, I think they've all been quite separate, um, but... Emma's definitely uh, the biggest departure, I think, from, from all of them. Next, it only takes a few shots of this movie to realise its creator is everyone's favourite Hollywood hipster, Wes Anderson. Yes, he's back with The French Dispatch, a movie with all the Anderson hallmarks you've come to know, like vintage colour schemes, famous actors pulling inscrutable facial expressions and repetitive dialogue. I want to buy it. It's not for sale. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. And a Wes Anderson movie wouldn't be complete without Bill Murray. Don't cry in my office. Next, Sky's new comedy, Intelligence, pokes fun at the office side of espionage. There's still this sense that I've wandered onto an abandoned farm. 
One tactic they deploy in the show to keep the world safe is hacking the browsing history of potential threats. So we asked writer Nick Mohammed and star David Schwimmer who they'd have a sneaky look at if they could. David Attenborough's? I bet he just sort of... <laughs> well, just because I bet he's sort of... so boring. <laughs> I bet he just looks a really interesting... Like the spotted deer. Yeah, no, a really interesting <laughs> animal. <laughs> Pretty safe territory. What I'd like to propose as a starting point are some team building exercises. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah? Yes. Can I get a yes, Jerry? Yes, Jerry. Yes, Jerry. Yes, Jerry. All right, we'll work on that. Hands out of the pockets. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I would be interested in her browsing history. <laughs> <laughs> be just cur out of curiosity, it'd be interesting. That's not the only thing David's interested in. His love of British comedy goes way back. I've always been a fan. I mean, since I was a kid, I watched, uh, I mean, Faulty Towers, Monty P all of Monty Python. Huge fan of, of, I mean, all British comedy growing up. Still to come, Steve Coogan clears up any ambiguity about his new character. He's a villain. He's not a nice guy. Um, but um, we see the people around him and they're, they're, they're interesting. They're, 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 you have more sympathy for you know, his wife and his, his children. And Chris Pratt reveals the themes hidden behind animated movie Onward. Coming clean with your conscience and being honest with your parents. Hey buddy, don't wipe off my kisses. Next, a big new streaming show now on Amazon is Hunters. You know what the best revenge is? A 10 episode show that follows a clandestine team of Nazi hunters hoping to stop the Fourth Reich. One of those needing to be stopped is played by Greg Austin, if they can. He is loving every second, and it's how much he lets that show. So it's always a question of like how he's always laughing on the inside, he's laughing at everyone. He is in control of every situation he's in. Sounds like there's a bit of Villanelle from Killing Eve in there. Jodie Comer, man. A big fan of her. I watched that and was like, how can I make that? into this, like how do I <laughs> translate her performance to what I'm doing. The show's anchored by two A-listers, Logan Lerman, and a young up-and-comer who we have high hopes for, Al Pacino. So were they in the plans from the start? Let's ask the show's creator, David Whale. Logan definitely was. I've, I've been a fan of Logan's for, for such a long time, and I think, uh, you know, he, he was probably, in writing Jonah, I think he was the one person, the one character in the script that, that I really did have in mind, for sure. Um, and then, you know, getting these otherworldly talents, Jerrica and Al and Josh Radner, I mean, it just, it, it, it's like Christmas morning, <laughs> or what I imagine it to be, because I'm Jewish, like Hanukkah morning, I guess. <laughs> Um, but it is, it's just, it is the most exhilarating part of the process. Even though David is the brains behind Hunters, he's happy to share the credit. I feel like we're all kind of co-creators of these different characters and of the show. He's a really great collaborator. It's one of the best parts about the job. You know, you have someone yelling at you all day, it's not great, is it? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I heard you already! <laughs> I'm a huge yeller. Huge, <laughs> scream a huge. Lot. Yeah. He yells, what do you think? That's great. Jerrica Hinton plays Millie Morris, the cop trying to make sense of a 1970s underground Nazi uprising. You like to say that Jonah is the heart of the show and uh, Millie is the soul, and I, and I take great pride in representing the soul of the show. Retail comedy greed hopes to have you in stitches as Steve Coogan dons white linen and even whiter teeth to play a fictional version of Philip Green. I want in your face. I am in your face. Actors don't tend to reveal who their characters are modelled on, but Coogan's past caring. He's the prime candidate. You know, he had a very high profile. Uh, he was unapologetic about his success. In fact, he wanted everyone to know about it. Sir Richard. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, Sir Richard. Yeah, Simon Cowell. Very, very good. He's good, yeah. Yes. You know, we all understand material success and we all like nice things. Some people, that's everything to them, that they, they, they can only uh, measure their sense of self-worth by having, by surrounding themselves with glamorous people and and and, and material things. Uh, and that's sort of his tragedy in a way, the Rich Rich McCready's uh, tragedy, certainly. Who's the guy with the bandana? It's Rod Stewart. It's so, not Rod Stewart's so. bitter older brother. So there's something to be pitied there. But he's also funny, so he's entertaining. You know, he's, 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 uh, he's complex. Yes, ultimately, he's a villain. What am I going to say about this? I don't... Well, I was hoping you'd like it, but it doesn't sound like... Is something wrong. Subs is wrong, yeah. Five and a half thousand miles away in LA, Chris Pratt has a question for his new movie Onward. Does this bring people together? It will bring Avengers fans back together because Chris has reteamed with Tom Holland to voice brothers in the animated adventure. We can see it in March, but Chris's son has had preview privileges. He loved it. I went with a whole group of his friends. I had one of the kids come up to me and say, 
Mr. Pratt, that's that's my new favorite movie. They call him Mr. Pratt, formal. Finally, entertainment is a broad church and a nice art house offering coming next week is Portrait of a Lady on Fire. The setting is France in 1770, where a painter paints a woman in secret. Celine Sciamma is the director. I didn't understand why cinema invented so few painters. I mean, you know, it's always like, okay, we're gonna do Turner, we're gonna do Van Gogh, we're gonna do so we know the work and we're like, oh, cool. But inventing a painter, especially a painter from the 18th century, my God. And on that tricky artistic ambition, we're done. See ya. Experience a journey from a golden era when you could actually find a train seat and they never broke down. Well, almost. They are the hard-working men and women who go loco for locomotives. The new series of the Yorkshire Steam Railway. All aboard continues Friday at 8 on Channel 5. Stream now on My5. Visiting the home of Wensleydale Cheese. We're joining Tony Robinson as he continues exploring the Yorkshire Dales now here on Channel 5 in Coast to Coast. Just a minute. Where's Dave staying again? Hampton by Hilton sponsors travel and adventures on Channel 5.